How often have you fantasized about being rich and famous? It's certainly a lifestyle that few really get to enjoy. Even though we all can live it, we can now all get a close-up look at just how the rich and famous really live, thanks to Robin Leach and his television crews and the, the production of the weekly series, Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous, which are seen on 170 stations, many of these independent stations that are on the line today. Robin, it's good to see you. It's good to be with you, Marvin. You, have, you are such a busy man. I, I called you three times in the last month and a half. Once your secretary said you were in London, the next time you were in Rio, and the next time in California. It sounds grand, but we are actually traveling about 75,000 miles for each one hour of television that we show. You show no signs of any jet lag today. No, I can sleep on planes, fortunately. What? What you find a common thread between the rich and famous who you've interviewed for your program? Yeah, I find that um, although money doesn't buy happiness, it sure does help. <laughs> I've yet to meet an unhappy millionaire. But what I have found, and I hope that this is a message that comes across subtly within the show, not that um, viewers will resent the wealth and the possessions and the trappings of fame and fortune, but the inspirational message that perhaps if we worked just that little bit harder, if we pulled up our socks, if we got off our backsides, we could achieve a little of the success that these people that we are showing on the series have obtained. Is there any one individual who stands out in your mind, a, a Horatio Alger story, who made something like that happen? One of the uh, segments that we're showing um, in about uh, a month's time involves a multi-multi-millionaire in Houston, Texas, who handles eighty million dollars a day which is the richest man we've yet to find he's a man that owns one-third of houston he is fifty two years of age he, ha he, w he had to leave home when he was thirteen because his family could no longer afford to feed him they were sharecroppers working on a farm that went bankrupt he went to work in a factory pushing a broom and the boss of that factory howard hughes and the man said one day i want to be as wealthy as howard hughes and now he is incredible you speak of Howard Hughes. Now, there's something intriguing that is a favorite of yours, the Howard Hughes tapes. You yeah, tell us we about that. talked Terry Moore, who has claimed that she was once married to the legendary billionaire, uh, into giving us some of the recordings that she used to make of their midnight phone conversations. I think it's the very first time ever on television that um, his midnight romance phone calls have ever been aired. And she showed us at the time that we play the tapes the collection of engagement and wedding rings that he'd sent over to her and it's a delightful conversation where he says she protests not to take the large one that he wants her to take she only wants the little one and then he says in this wonderful way you know I am rich enough not only to afford the tray but every jewelry store in the world <laughs> incredible you gain access to it. You also gain access to the palace in, in Monaco, Prince yes. Rainier, Princess Caroline. We, we, we believe that the public is fascinated with royalty, how royalty lives, how royalty earns its money and spends its money. So there'll be a lot of, um, in the course of the next 52 weeks, a lot of glimpses into places that we've only ever dreamed of going before. We what spend kind of a lot of did you get into the, uh, the palace in Monaco? In, in Monaco, we saw some of the beautiful furnishings that um, decorate the palace there. We saw some of the, the official tables where what Prince Rainier... people? Well, there, you know, you, it's very difficult with television because we don't spend as much time as we'd all like to spend with them. Um, we spend about 30 hours with any given segment to film, and it narrows down to four minutes on air. So it's a lot of time, but you never really get to know the people. But we found everybody delightful. One of the things I'm fascinated by, I guess it's in one of the upcoming uh, programs, is that you uh, went on a... Uh a shopping binge on Rodeo Drive? Is that, was that a previous This is program? true. We have a three-part series coming up. We take a look at, in the first two weeks of some of the, the stores that sell these fabulous um, items at incredibly high prices. And you know, Greta Garbo, who lives here in New York, is really the landlord of Rodeo Drive, which is the most expensive shopping street in the world. But what we did was we gave um, Maud Adams and Barbara Carrera, because they're both James Bond girls, um, a mythical million dollars to see who could spend it first and fast, <laughs> fastest along that street. And uh, I think Barbara wins because she managed to go through the million dollars in less than 50 minutes. And I understand Maud came back with change. 
<laughs> yes, because she only wanted to buy fresh produce because she said that <laughs> all the jewelry and all the fabulous furs, she, did, she wasn't into that. Rodeo Drive, just for all of our folks who, uh, who may not be familiar, Rodeo Drive is located, of course, in Beverly Hills. And it's, uh, let's just tick off a couple of names. John Forsyth, give a quick response. Impression. John, John Forsyth, a wonderful, delightful man who, who makes a lot of money on Dynasty each week, but actually bets on some of his own horses at the racetrack and wins every time. Paul Newman. Um, the man admitted to us that he gives a million dollars a year away to charity. Barbara Streisand. A woman who proves what every woman can prove, that if you dream long enough to win, you will win. Robin Leach, thank you very much. It sounds like you really have a winner in your program, Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Marvin. And that's our midday edition for this Monday, April.